I'm now going to show you a few different tricks, a few different strategies for incorporating an extract into your essay. So let's have a look at some different elements. For an introduction, a great phrase, a great specific sentence starter that you can all use is as illustrated by feature in the extract Shakespeare explores. And I'm using Shakespeare as an example, but you could just slot in the author or composer of your text. But notice here, it's as illustrated by feature in the extract. It's not just as illustrated in the extract because we need to say something specific. And that's why we brainstormed those features, those elements of form, the character dynamics, what was happening in the extract provided, some of the notable techniques, all of those things will help you fill the gap here so that you can actually say something specific and not just do general references to an extract. You do need to mention the extract, the word the extract, and it's good to do that to directly engage with the question and show the mark you're doing so, but you need to go that extra step. You need to add that one extra layer of specificity. So this is the way to do it. And you can see an example here is as illustrated by the combative dialogue between Miranda and Caliban in the extract. Notice it follows this pattern exactly. It fills in this feature part with what was going on. The fact that there was a dialogue that was combative, that was hostile between two characters. And then we go on to say Shakespeare projects, Shakespeare explores, and now we bring in the key themes that we identified in the extract as well. And we make sure that those themes relate to the argument that we originally wanted to make anyway, as best we can. You need to be flexible, but also try and interpret the extract in line with your understanding of the text so that you can use material that you've already prepared and refined beforehand. In terms of body paragraphs, take a look at a topic sentence here, reflected by the feature in the extract. Notice it's just exactly the same as the other one, but we're showing you a slightly different way of introducing it, i.e. with a different verb, reflected instead of illustrated. And you wanna have a few go-to ones that you can use. So you can recycle through them, try not to use any single word like illustrated or reflected too much, but here it's just reflected by the feature in the extract, Shakespeare does this, portrays this, represents this. These are simple sentence starters that will force you to do the right thing. In the example here, reflected by the master-slave dynamic. It can be that concise, it can be that simple if you can nail that specific feature. And that's why you've got to do that initial brainstorming phase, that brainstorming step of finding key features and themes and specific quotes to help you do this really quickly as you go through your essay. So reflected by the master-slave dynamic, master-slave because Caliban's been enslaved by Miranda and Prospero, in the extract, Shakespeare challenges the audience to consider whether Prospero is justified in his revenge quest. So assume we were already saying something about questioning the role of Prospero, whether he's a tyrant, whether he is justified in his revenge, maybe he's a benevolent ruler, or he's a usurper and he's taken power away from the natives, which is the perspective that's somewhat pushed by Atwood in that extract. So assuming that was the idea you were already going to talk about, the master-slave dynamic element, that part of the extract fits really well into that point. So you bring in the specific features from the extract that work best with the different points. You've got to be strategic as to where you slot in different features and different themes in your essay. And then what about your analysis in your body paragraphs? Let's have a look at how you could do that. Because as we said, you want to use specific quotes from the extract for the purpose of identifying techniques and providing a specific point of analysis. You don't just refer to quotes generally, you actually need to have at least one specific reference to the extract in your analysis per paragraph. Have a look at this. Imagine in your analysis that you've already made a point that connects to something you can see in the extract and you found a technique for a quote in the extract. You could follow on from your previous sentence of analysis where you've talked about another quote, another technique from another part of the text because you don't just need to talk about the extract. You could follow on from that with something from the extract. So you could say your first point, then this is reinforced by the extract and here we're just saying it generally because we're gonna then provide a specific element after, as the metaphor in quote reveals dot, dot, dot. So that's a great structure for complementing another piece of analysis that you already have. In practice, this could look like, this is reinforced by the extract as Miranda's derogatory language. Notice the technique there directly from the extract to condemn Caliban's vile race. That was the useful quote that we identified in the extract as well 
reveals, now we're getting into the effects, we need to explain the meaning, the intergenerational prejudice against colonized peoples. So it's revealing an intergenerational prejudice because if you picked it up, Miranda is an extension of Prospero and she is indoctrinated. She's been brainwashed with Prospero's attitudes. So now she treats Caliban as a savage, but only because of Prospero. So if you were making a point about how Prospero controls Miranda in The Tempest, this is a great extended point. Or you might replace another point that you already had about Prospero controlling Miranda with this specific example. So you can replace or extend. And then in terms of link sentences, thus, the extract invites the reader to reevaluate. It's something more about the lesson we take away from that point that you've just proven. It's how it impacts the reader. I always focus on the impact on the responder for link sentences, or you could link it to the textual conversation in this particular example. But if you're doing any other text or any other unit of study for the last sentence of your body paragraph, the link, you would just say, thus, the extract invites the responder or reader to reevaluate something specific. So thus, the extract invites a broader textual conversation that questions the legitimacy of European colonization, that's the context point, due to its oppression of a seemingly vile race of natives. Seemingly, because that's how they were treated, but they weren't in fact vile, or, and they weren't this foreign alien race, they were just misunderstood. That's the idea. And this is what I mean by saying you don't just need to use quotes for the purpose of finding techniques and analyzing them. You can actually weave them in very subtly, seamlessly, like this. At the end of here, we use vile race of natives to show that deeper engagement with the extract. And the best students will do just that. For the conclusion, you might end with a phrase like, ultimately, the extract reflects dot dot dot, and then bring in the specific argument or idea that you have just proven in relation to the extracts, and then go on to tell us the ultimate takeaway, the ultimate lesson that we can learn from the one text or both texts together, whatever is relevant to your study. Here, we're gonna say, ultimately, the extract reflects the power of textual conversations to broaden our limited contextual understanding of cultural imprisonment. So we're saying that because we don't always understand the context of a particular text, when we look at a later text that looks back, like Hagseed looking back at The Tempest and having that conversation, that is opening our eyes, it's broadening our perspective on how culturally people can be imprisoned by the values of their time and they can't see beyond it. So people in Shakespeare's time couldn't necessarily appreciate that they were treating the peoples of these colonized territories in a savage way themselves rather than the people on those islands being savages. So cultural imprisonment is a really nice take on the idea of imprisonment because the quotes mentioned prisons, so we want to talk about that theme, but we're always saying a specific type as well. So cultural imprisonment, because they're the values that you can act out, often unconsciously, in a way that demonstrates a limited understanding of other people, other groups of people. So there you have it, how to approach an extract question, what to look for in an extract question, and then how to actually incorporate references to the extract that are specific, throughout different parts of your essay. I hope that helps. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like this video now for me and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out gentle.com for our best resources as well. And good luck with your studies.